This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then, replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the spinal cord. Identify the structure A, what type of information it transmits, and then identify the structure B, what is its function. This is a dissection of the vertebral canal showing the spinal cord after opening the dural sheath. The vertebral canal is exposed after removal of the laminae and spinous processes of the vertebrae. So, we are looking at the posterior aspect of the spinal cord. Structure A is thus a posterior root of a spinal nerve. It transmits sensory information, both somatic and visceral. The anterior root transmits motor information, and the nerve, the spinal nerve, which is formed by the union of the posterior and anterior roots of spinal nerve, is thus mixed sensory and motor but structure a the posterior root is sensory b is ligamentum denticulatum or denticulate ligament which extends from the surface of the cord across the subarachnoid space to insert into the inner surface of the dura it is made of piearachnoid tissue and extends midway between anterior and posterior roots of spinal nerves. The anterior roots cannot be seen here because they are located anterior to the ligament and are obscured by it in this view. Note that the ligament is serrated. That's to say it has lateral teeth by which it is attached to the dura, hence the name denticulate ligament. There are 21 pairs of these teeth and they serve to stabilize the spinal cord within the vertebral canal. Identify structures A and B. This is a section of the spinal cord and the surrounding meninges. You can see the outer thick covering of dura mater made of dense irregular connective tissue in A. So A is the dura mater. Also note the thin arachnoid mater applied to the inner surface of the dura. Then the third and the deepest layer, the pia mater, applied to the surface of the cord. In between the pia and arachnoid is the subarachnoid space, which in this section shows rootlets of spinal nerves, anterior and posterior rootlets emerging from anterolateral and posterolateral sulci. So B is a nerve rootlet. Several of these rootlets join to form a nerve root. You can see here that the nerve rootlets are cut obliquely. The reason is that the nerve rootlets have to descend before leaving the vertebral canal through the intervertebral foramen. The descent is with increasing obliquity as we go distally in the spinal cord. Now, why do they descend? The reason of the descent is that the spinal cord is shorter than the vertebral canal. Thus, spinal cord segments are located cranial to the numerically equivalent vertebra. And in the fetus, the spinal cord runs the whole length of the vertebral column. After the third month of fetal development, the vertebral column elongates more rapidly than the spinal cord. So, and by the time of birth, the caudal end of the spinal cord is opposite the disc between second and third lumbar vertebrae. It is much shorter than the length of the vertebral canal. Then a slight difference in growth rate continues during childhood, such that the adult cord ends opposite the disc between the first and second lumbar vertebra. So these nerve rootlets, when they have to descend down, form the nerve roots and the nerve roots, they arise from the vertebral canal opposite their original 
intervertebral foramina. For example, like a sacral segment of the spinal cord has sacral nerves attached to it. The sacral segment is located at the level of first lumbar vertebra, but the nerves and the rootlets of the nerves, they have to descend down until they reach the sacral foramina in order to leave the vertebral canal. So they have an oblique course and this obliquity increases as we descend down. That's why we can see here that the sections, some of the sections of the nerves here are cut obliquely, even though this is a thoracic segment of the spinal cord. Identify the locations A and B Name the vessel or vessels located at each location. A is the dorsal median sulcus, while B is the anterior or ventral median fissure. Note here that the fissure in B is deep and it separates the anterior funiculi of the spinal cord, while the sulcus posteriorly is shallow sulcus and the posterior funiculi are separated from each other by a sheet of glial tissue in the mid-sagittal plane of the spinal cord. This sheet extends from the posterior median sulcus toward the gray commissure. You will expect to find these grooves, the dorsal median sulcus and the anterior or ventral median fissure. They extend on the surface of the medulla oblongata as well. Now at the ventral median fissure, you expect to find an anterior spinal artery and an anterior spinal vein. While at the posterior median sulcus, it is only the posterior spinal vein that is expected to be seen. Only a vein we see here posteriorly. The posterior spinal arteries, which are two arteries, are located at the posterolateral sulcus and not in the midline and each one is accompanied by a posterolateral vein. Identify the nucleus A, name the tract formed by the axons of its neurons on the ipsilateral side of the cord. Through which cerebellar peduncle does the tract enter the cerebellum? This nucleus is found at the base of the dorsal horn. Note that this is a section of a thoracic segment of the spinal cord. Because of the presence of a lateral horn or intermedial lateral cell column and the narrow anterior horn. Now nucleus A is the nucleus dorsalis also known as Clark's column. It is found throughout the thoracic and upper lumbar regions of the cord. Neurons in this nucleus give rise to axons that ascend the cord in the ipsilateral spinocerebellar tract. This is the position of the dorsal spinocerebellar tract. The dorsal spinocerebellar tract, which is formed by the axons of the cells of this nucleus enters the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Identify the circumscribed regions 1, 2, and 3. What is the main histological component that is shared in all the three areas? These are white matter regions that uh, surround the core of gray matter in the spinal cord. They are the dorsal or posterior funiculus 1, Two is the lateral funiculus and three is the anterior funiculus. They are named according to their relative positions in the spinal cord. In some classifications, the anterior and lateral funiculi are considered to be a single anterolateral funiculus. A funiculus consists of a group of tracts, ascending, descending, or both. The tracts, in turn, are composed of bundles of myelinated axons. Hence the name white, referring to the myelin sheath, which is mainly formed of lipid material, the myelin sheath that ensheaths the axons that form the tracts that form the funiculi. 
So the myelinated axon is the shared histological component in these three areas of white matter. Identify the structures one to five. This is a section of the spinal cord surrounded by the thick layer of dura mater, one. So one is the thick dura. You can see the posterior root of a spinal nerve, two, which is attached to the posterior lateral sulcus of the spinal cord. And also you can see an anterior root of a spinal nerve, four, attached to an anterior lateral sulcus. Note the dorsal root ganglion, three. The dorsal root ganglion contains nerve cells, nerve cell bodies that are sensory in function. Now these cell bodies that are located here are described to be pseudo unipolar. So this is the cell body. It has a, a single process, so unipolar, but it is pseudo unipolar. The process will divide into a peripheral process and a central process. The peripheral process reaches through the spinal nerve and the central process enters the cord through the posterior root of the spinal nerve. Note here that the spinal nerve is formed by the union of a ventral root, which is motor in function. The cell bodies are located in anterior horn cells. On the axons, they pass into the anterior root and go to the spinal nerve which is also formed of a dorsal root, which is sensory in function. Thus, the spinal nerve is mixed sensory and motor, but the roots are either sensory in case of the posterior or motor in case of the anterior root. Identify the structure, name the epithelial cells that line it, and then name the surrounding area of gray matter. This is the central canal of the spinal cord. It runs longitudinally through the length of the entire spinal cord and is continuous with the ventricular system of the brain. The fourth ventricle narrows at a region called the obex to become the central canal of the closed part of the medulla, which continues as the central canal of the spinal cord. Now, the central canal represents the adult remnant of the central cavity of the neural tube in the embryo. It is lined by ependymal cells, the thin epithelial lining of the ventricular system of the brain, and the central canal of the spinal cord. Ependyma is one of the four types of neuroglia in the central nervous system. Astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, microglia, and ependyma. The ependyma is involved in production of cerebrospinal fluid. The central canal is surrounded by a thin area of central gray matter called the gray commissure. The portion of gray substance in the front of the canal is named the anterior gray commissure. That behind it, the posterior gray commissure. And they constitute lamina 10 of Rexid lamina that define the histological components of the gray matter of the spinal cord. The anterior gray commissure is in contact anteriorly with the anterior white commissure. Note that it is the white commissure that contains crossing commissural fibers and not the gray matter. The gray matter is formed of cell bodies. It's the white matter that is formed of axons and nerve processes. The gray matter in this area, even though it is called the gray commissure in the sense that it unites the two sides of gray matter with each other, but there is no crossing of fibers at the gray commissure. Crossing of fibers takes place in the anterior white commissure. Identify the nucleus, name the tract formed by axons of its neurons. The nucleus is located in the dorsal horn of gray matter. It is just ventral to the substantia gelatinosa which looks a little bit lighter. It is the nucleus proprius. The nucleus proprius extends throughout the cord and can be identified at all levels of the cord. Here, it is a thoracic level section. Note the intermediate lateral cell column and the narrow anterior horn, 
which goes, these two features, they go with thoracic level section. Neurons comprising this nucleus give rise to axons that cross to the other side through the anterior white commissure and ascend up in the spinal cord as the spinothalamic tracts. We have lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts.